morning, friends. We have had the pleasure of enjoying the talents of Miss Haley Jackson for quite a while now, and she has some special guests with us here this morning. I know you'll want to welcome Alvin and Miss Tanya with us this morning. We're so glad to have you with us this morning. Um, Haley's mom, Miss Sheila Jackson, is with us this morning, and you are in for such a blessing. <coughs> Good morning. It's good to be here this morning. My favorite hymns. God sent his son.
guess what? She gets to sing again. <laughs> good morning, good morning, everyone. It's exciting just to be here to see y'all's beautiful faces. Um, before we have um, a pr time of prayer, I have a couple of announcements to make. So listen up. It involves you. Um, the deacon nomination form is located by our offering basket in the back as you exit. Uh, so get that filled out because that will be coming soon. We need to nominate some folks as deacons. Um, remember as you leave as well that the 1982 version of the um, laptop back there is at the exit. So put your donation in there for a Wi-Fi extension for our community, for our students who will be needing it if we go virtual. And over here, we are all too familiar with this. It's a plastic container, very simple, very cheap. Um, and you all know that last week, uh, actually not last week, but a couple of days ago, a hurricane category four hit Louisiana and Texas. So our church is going to be a dropping off par, uh, point for our state in this area for containers. So we want to collect as many as possible, larger, the better, so that victims can put their items inside the tubs for safekeeping. Um, but they will be uh, collected this week, at the end of the week, so you have a week to get that together. You can drop it off underneath the pavilion and um, it will get to the victims this weekend, hopefully. Um, so please help out with that. There are some meetings coming up, so listen up. If you are on the missions committee meeting, I mean, missions committee, you will be meeting on September 13th, which is two Sundays from now at five o'clock. Then at 5.30, if you are on the building and grounds committee, you will meet. Hospitality, you will be meeting right after the service this morning in the senior suite, so just make your way. And I have Lamar, who has a couple of announcements. Lamar, oh, there's that handsome Lamar, there he is. Good morning. Uh, a couple of things. I uh, did want to share with you, I mentioned back se uh, several weeks ago that we would try to give you some updates on uh, what the church was doing as far as our pastor search process. Uh, tonight is a very uh, important meeting. Uh, we've invited the, uh, all the deacons, both active and those that are, not, are currently on the inactive list, and all the deacon emeritus that we have. Uh, along with the personnel committee and the church staff, we'll meet in here at five o'clock. Um, what turns out to be a virtual meeting uh, with Bill Wilson for the Center uh, of Healthy Church for Healthy Churches uh, out of North Carolina uh, comes highly recommended. But I uh, feel like it's going to be a very important meeting for us to have to make some decisions on how we process and go forward with our uh, pastor search and also some other things that you know we desperately need to work on within the church as far as you know in, uh, uh, repairing relationships and things of that nature so all of those will be discussed uh, tonight uh, Bill was supposed to be here uh, uh, I dropped a bomb on Chris Cheatwood and, and Mike <laughs> Monday because I found out that he wouldn't be able to be here because he's having surgery he's got a quarantine for 14 days so but they've been scrambling all week to try to get it set up to where we can do an effective uh, virtual meeting. So uh, if I hope that you've planned to come, but if for some reason we've tried to uh, flood the zone with information or, or uh, announcements, so, but if you hadn't heard that, uh, if you're a, a deacon, act, active or inactive, uh, in part of the personnel committee, uh, try to be here. It'll be at 5 o'clock as soon as the uh, choir practice has ended. So. Uh, and then one other thing I wanted to share with you, some of you may have noticed as you came in uh, this morning, uh, there is a, a board out front with a cross in the middle of it. Uh, Nikki and I got to talking a couple of weeks ago about uh, with, with the Wednesday night uh, services, we've kind of lost our ability to share prayer concerns. So back uh, a few years ago when we had Holy Week, we had a prayer cross uh, in the, in the uh, sanctuary and we ask you to come in and put a prayer request on that cross. 
and uh, then we would pray over those. Well, this is a you know, smaller version of that. Uh, we're going to leave that in the, in the entryway. There's pieces of paper, thumbtacks, and then there's a cork board there. And if you have a prayer request as you come in each Sunday morning, re record that. And then uh, it, during Nikki's prayer time, she will, you know, uh, recognize the prayers that are being offered for that particular uh, prayer request. And then we plan to update that each week. Uh, we won't leave them out there, you know, indefinitely. Uh, we'll take the, the prayer request down and you can, if someone is, is continues to be in the hospital or continue to need the prayer, then you would put it back on the board. So I uh, hope that would get us back into uh, recognizing the different uh, prayer concerns that's on people's hearts and minds. Thank you. Thank you, Lamar. All right, y'all are itching, I know, to smile at someone you haven't seen in a while. And if you have a mask on, you can wave. So turn to the right or the left, smile at someone, pandemic style. <laughs> let's start our service with a time of prayer. So let's pray together. Loving God, you've given us a beautiful day and we are thankful for it. You've given us this place to come and worship. And we are thankful for that as well. We ask that you keep us focused on you this morning. May our words, our thoughts, everything be given to you and for you. And outside this room, there's a wall. There's names on that wall. And we pray for those people now. We ask that you be with them, that your presence be felt. Again, Lord, may you bless this service. May it be for you. In your name we pray. Amen. Good morning. Our scripture call to worship this morning comes from Romans 12, verse 9 through 21. Let love be genuine, hate what is evil, hold fast to what is good, love one another with mutual affection, outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal, be ardent in spirit, serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints, extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice, weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible so far, as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. Know if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not, overcome by, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Isn't that wonderful encouragement this morning that every moment is worth a living because our Savior lives. 
So thank you again to Ms. Jackson for being us. That beautiful accompaniment um, was brought to us. This is Mr. Nathaniel Bookman. I know you want to welcome him this morning. And we get another chance to be blessed again.
thank you both for being here this morning. What a blessing. Oh, woo, I have chill bumps, do y'all? Goosebumps. If you would like, you can grab your Bible or read from the front here on the board. We will be reading from Matthew 16, 21 through 26. From that time on, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. But Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, get behind me, Satan, you are a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, if any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Please pray with me. May the words I speak, those words we hear, be from the heart of God. Lord, may your words this morning challenge us, make us think and act. It's your name that we pray this morning. Amen. Well, the past few years, I have become quite fond of blueberry picking. It's a place of peace and stillness. It just soothes my mind and my soul, like an inexpensive therapy. My worries, my inner conflicts, all those fears that I have, they just fade away as I carefully walk around the bush collecting berries. Now, there's one particular blueberry bush that I enjoy visiting. It sits in the yard of Nancy and Lyndon's old place, not too far from here along this busy road we call Nesbitt Lake. This large bush, it rarely disappoints during the season. It's covered in berries from the tip top to the bottom. And with a thorough inspection, one could see the exhausting task before them, before even reaching for a berry. It's covered. But I have a system. Okay, so I like to first reach out, arms level, eye level, and collect the berries. And then my eyes move up, and I reach up towards the top of the bush, collecting as many berries as possible. But... While I'm up there fumbling about and grabbing, most of those berries fall to the ground rather than end up in my basket. That's the easy part. But then I move on to the challenging job of concentrating on that dreaded lower section of this blueberry bush. Now, it's at that moment that I have to twist like this. You know, you've done it before twist my arms and contort my back and neck and these unusual postures the term bending over backwards comes to mind to get those berries and along the bottom of this bush it's where most of the berries are found the branches they're weighted down with the bulk of the fruit and I have to pull and finagle the branches in the most uncomfortable positions to gather those berries. And at times my nose, it's like inches from the ground. But it's at this moment that I'm giving this moment, moment of grace where I locate those berries that I dropped earlier and I can collect them even though they're, they lay on the ground. But when I come back up to standing position, 
My hair is a mess. It's all entangled, strands are outwards and twigs are protruding from my hair. My knees and my back, they ache. Yes, I'm old, I turned 40 a couple of days ago. And my arms are even covered in scratches from the branches. Any those like passing by quickly in the car, because it's right by the road, those passing by in their cars probably come to the this realization that she must have gotten into some sort of altercation. Mm-hmm. Well, I have with a blueberry bush. But all that hard work has led to a basket full of blueberries. Now today we look at the text in Matthew that occurs in the middle of Christ's identity being discussed publicly and among his disciples. And um, at the beginning of chapter 16, you can read that the Sadducees and the Pharisees, they're demanding this sign from Jesus. They want him to prove who he claims to be. Now, there were some signs already in place, these miraculous healings that happened for the Canaanite woman's daughter, um, and also this large crowd numbering in the thousands that Jesus fed with just a minuscule bit of food, but that wasn't enough to them. But here Jesus, he sees it important to prepare his disciples for what's to come of him. He's going to endure this great suffering be killed and rise three days later. And immediately we see Peter's discomfort with this statement. Peter, like many Jews of his time, they believed that the Messiah was going to come in this military might and force and conquer the Jewish opponent. Not suffering and death, as Jesus spoke of. God forbid it, Lord. This must never happen to you, Peter cries. But Jesus, he's having none of this talk. He calls Peter Satan, yikes, and a trip hazard. Bless his heart. Bless his heart, as we say here in the South. Poor Peter, just six verses before, six, you can read it. Jesus is praising Peter, calling him the rock on which his church is to be built. Yet now Peter has his mind on human things, not divine things. Now Jesus, he continues to describe what it means, what he means by thinking on on divine things. He says, if you want to become my follower, let them deny themselves, take up their cross and follow me. So Jesus is communicating here to his disciples then they're not going to be just witnesses of his suffering, but they're going to have to take part in it as well. And the same is expected of us today. We must deny ourselves, take up our cross, and follow Christ. And by taking up our cross, we carry the burdens of others. Just as Christ carried our burdens on his shoulders to Calvary. This is the faithful way that we deny ourselves and follow the path of Christ. Now he goes on in verse 25. He says, for those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake will find it. What will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? What will they give in return for their life? Now, here these verses are a little familiar. They're similar to the temptation of Jesus. Just a few verses before, not verses, chapters before, the devil, we all know this story, entices Jesus. He entices him to save his life, you know, by commanding the stones to become bread so that he may eat, to lose his life when he encourages Jesus to throw himself from the temple wall, remember? And um, lastly, to gain the world by worshiping the devil. No wonder Jesus is so harsh on poor Peter, calling him Satan. It's as if Jesus is having this flashback to his dealings with the devil in the wilderness. But the reason that we empathize with Peter is because 
We are Peter in this story, right? We can relate to Peter. It's our default setting as humans to choose the easier, shorter, less bumpy ride in life. Our human selfishness and our fear, it gets the best of us most of the time. But this story, it, it pushes us to change those settings and place our minds and our hearts on divine ideas rather than our human habits. Now, I took my first drawing class as an art student at JSU. And before then, I would draw pictures on spiral notebook paper, copy paper, if I could find it, uh, those yellow legal notepads, you know what I'm talking about? But in college, on a, in a college level drawing class, I was introduced to the 18 by 24 inch drawing pad, much larger than what I was expected, or you know, accustomed to drawing to. Um, but after my first few drawings in that class, my professor, she confronted me. She asked, why do you keep your drawings so small? Look at all this paper that's unused. No one should see a magnifying glass to see your you know, talent on this paper. And she was right. My drawings, they were insignificantly placed in the center of that paper, that large paper. It was a natural habit that I had created over the years, drawing on smaller material. And it took a bit of practice, a lot of effort to move that pencil beyond that small space, reaching out towards the edge of that paper. It wasn't easy. And we all have those habits, those human settings in place, and they're difficult to change. But when I made those changes at, on my artwork, I was able to broaden my abilities as an artist. Now, Paul, in his letter to the Romans, he explains what Christ expects of his followers, how one might deny oneself and re reset those human settings that we have in place. And we read that earlier, thank you, Wit, from Romans 12. Here, Paul, he presents these behaviors that are formed by those who have renewed minds and renewed hearts. And many of those actions put us in difficult, uncomfortable situations. Let's look at a few, like allowing our love to be genuine, especially to those that we dislike, even giving food and drink to them, our enemies. Extending hospitality to the stranger, those people that don't look like us, that don't think like us, that act very differently than we do. And not being haughty or arrogant, but associating with the lowly. Giving our time and our effort to humble tasks. That's not easy either. Ooh, here's the kicker. Never repaying evil with evil, but overcoming evil with good. So revenge is out of the question. I guess rejecting our selfish nature and taking up our cross has never been really closely related to the desired lifestyle of power and security. Hmm. Author Clayton Smith writes, God's power is revealed not in walks through the porticos of power, but through the dusty alleys of misery and weakness. This is where Jesus walked. This is where Jesus leads us to walk. This is where he strengthens us to bear the burdens of discipleship. Okay, so maybe if we insert two adjectives into verse 25, we can better understand what Christ is saying. Better amplify that statement he made. So, whosoever will save his lower life will lose the higher life. So we have a lower life and a higher life. Now that higher life is all too familiar. Our higher life is, consists of the greed and the pride and the fear and self-centeredness we deal with daily. Our desire to prosper and compete against one another. Our higher life wants to draw lines 
where we have to choose these sides to stand behind while knowing that Christ came to erase those lines. And that higher life wants to refuse to listen to others but prove that we're right. Or settling for easy answers, half-truths, superficial relationships, pointing at other people's mistakes while refusing to point that finger back at ourselves. That higher life, it demands nothing but contentment for our own lifestyles, yet we ignore the needs of others, our neighbors, and the oppressions that they face. We were never promised that our journey of faith as followers of Christ would be painless, straightforward, or even comfortable. That path that Christ put before us to follow was anything but that. We know the life Christ led. So what will it take for us to reset our default settings? To deny that individual framework that habitually embraces the human things of life. What will it take? How do we allow our lower life to reign where the comforts of our higher life go so neglected that Christ radiates through our every fiber? We have to serve each other. We have to be servants as Christ served. We have to give of ourselves to one another until we're weak. We have to love each other relentlessly. Relentlessly, it's a big word. So I encourage you, grab your basket, bend down, get on your knees even, get ready to sweat. Push and tug and maneuver your way through the branches of your lower life. It's not going to be easy, but it's where an abundance of fruit is to be harvested. That is where our baskets will overflow. Amen. Stand for our hymn of invitation. And he, if you've seen him, he's been visiting for a while now. And he has come to accept Christ. He wants to be baptized. And um, he told me earlier that um, as a child, he was baptized. But he, you know, a, a lot of us have had this experience, didn't understand truly what he was doing. And so now he wants to make it right. So he has come today to say, baptize me and I'm excited to, to tell you all about it and I know you were all excited too so we'll have um, Cody up here if you would like to from afar give him a hug or a pat on the back pandemic style please do but we welcome you to Williams we're excited for you, Thank you. let's pray together Lord give us encourage to follow the way of your cross 
and to trust that through it confounds the logic of the world, your way interrupts the patterns of sin and death, both now and forever. Amen.